What's up guys and girls? So Techno here. Dimensioning the valve body can be tricky. So I wanted to highlight some of the tools we can use for dimensioning that I'm going to look for when I assess it. So not only do we need things like an overall height, D key, top line. I don't like to grab edges if possible. I like to grab lines. Boom. And then I can go down to the bottom and grab this flat down here. Boom. Overall dimensions should be furthest out on our drawing. So that one's an obvious and kind of critical. We need some overall dimensions, okay? We also need to locate a lot of centers here. So if you didn't if you don't remember center marks are these cross hatches or crosshairs that go inside all of the centers of the circle. So I'm going to hit up everything that is circular. Do it. Oh, did I lose it? Go. There we go. And this one's really important, that one too. So I've got my circles identified there. The next height that I'm going to do that's critical is the distance, so D for dimension, from the top of the flange to the center of the circle. Because when I'm designing this valve, that's probably a more important number than the overall height. The top of the flange is going to bolt to something, and then the center of the circle is going to go to something. Okay, So always locate circles by their centers. In this case, we've got a center line going down the middle. If we wanted to mark that, we could. Center line right here. I could click the outside of this and the outside of this, and I would have a center line going down the middle. Now, that's getting pretty muddled, right? we got a lot going on there. Let me show you something else that we haven't done yet that's really important. Uh, if you're into cars or trucks and you want to put some new rims on, let's say some mudder tires, okay, you get on to the tire store and you tell them I want some 33s and they're like okay what's your bolt pattern? I don't even know what 33s are. 33 Dubs. Theron. 24s? No? You're not down with Dubs 20 inch rims on your on your GTI? Drop it. Okay. So not really the opportunity to upgrade the Camry there I guess maybe but if you wanted to that maybe goes up. You should get some 100, 140 mph, right? That's uh, what the speedometer says. It, it goes, uh, it's got park and drive. Okay. All okay. The, all the let's let's find somebody who doesn't have a Camry, and let, maybe they can go on with the story. If we want to upgrade rims on a car, the bolt pattern is going to have two critical numbers in it. One, how many bolts or lug nuts are there that hold on your rim? Four or five on the Camry. Any idea? On a Camry 6, I doubt it. Maybe 5. Okay, so there's 5 bolts. The other thing they're going to ask you is what is the center diameter of those bolts? And you're going to be like, what are you? I don't even know what you're talking about. Those bolts are all on a center diameter circle. They're the same diameter, right? They have to be. But most people don't even know how to measure that, much less what it is. So they would say, well, is it a 5 by 4.5? Meaning, is it a 5 lug by 4.5 inch diameter circle? That's the important information. Now, they can walk out to the parking lot, look at it, and go, oh, here, this is how you measure it. Yes, it is. Most people in the consumer world would never know that. But in the manufacturing world, it's really important to know what center line are these holes placed on. How would I locate these otherwise? I'd have to do linear dimensions to all of them, and it would be a mess. So dimensioning-wise, what you need to do is you need to use this feature called a uh, center line pattern. So I've clicked this now, and... Um, did this go away? Center marks. I might be, hang on, let me full screen. Let's see if. It's under geometry. My, my window is too squeezed. My window is too squeezed. So I have to click this drop down here and click center mark pattern. You can just click the X. The X where? Good call. Yeah. There it is. So center mark pattern, and I'm going to choose these circles. Now, this has auto-complete checked, which means it's gotten smarter in recent years. Click this first circle, and it's like, oh, which is the next one? I'll click the second one here. And it's still kind of not sure. It's like, well, which way do you want to go? I'm going to go click the third one this way. See if it'll select it. There. And it did complete it all the way around. And now I've got to click OK. And I've got now a center line that goes all the way around that I need to dimension and place them out here somewhere in space. 
That center line is really important. I'm going to look for that. What else am I going to look for? Do you have angular indications on the line that goes through the center of this hole lines up with the center of the valve? But it's a certain degree off the middle. So dimension, I'm going to hit this center line here, and then this newly formed line here, and I'm going to go up at a degree at an angle like this to show that I am 45 degrees from this center line. I'll do it again for this one to this center line. Whoa, that didn't work. D. Is there a video on this? He's making one. I'm recording it. Are you gonna watch it? Yeah, you're not exactly sounding very uh, intelligible. But. <clears throat> I have a Toyota Camry, so that's nice. Yeah. So I've got my degrees placed out around here. I'm showing the distance between these degrees. Center mark pattern is going to happen the same on the top. Uh, I might want to change the view here because it's a little hard to see. I'm showing these section lines. So if I want to edit the view, where is my edit window? This one? So I chose visible edges instead of hidden, and that cleaned it up a lot. Same process with the center mark pattern. Question from the crowd. I thought I heard a question. Enough to represent it fully. So I just located the center mark pattern here. I would dimension these holes. I got to show you a few other things. This section view, how do we do it? We've only done it once before. I'm going to delete this one. Escape, select, delete. Go away. Yeah, still not working. There we go. Ah, uh, section view. Shh, still recording. Thank you. Under my drawing view options, we know how to do projected views. We've seen this once. I'm going to click on section view, choose the view that I want to section, and it's going to ask me, well, where do you want to section it? Oh, it's really kind of running slow. I want to go right down the middle. There we go. From this point to this point. Bring it out to the right and click OK. That's going to show me an interior view. It's just practice for you. You may not dimension anything off of this, but it can show us the depth that the shaft is. And if it was if this was modeled correctly, it should have some drop downs in here or some countersinks. Right now it does not. So we have some issues with this particular model. Well, it looks like it's got something here though, so I'm not sure what's going on with the section view. Didn't go up high enough, maybe? Yeah, I, so. I might not have had a good selection. Yeah, you're right. I selected to here. Okay. There it is. Now I can see that countersunk top hat there. All right, a few other things. We've done a little bit of notation of fasteners. If you were charged with fasteners, was anybody in here assigned with the fasteners? Um, nuts and bolts? No, so we just have Isaac Mertley in first block. We're counting on him completely. Uh, we might give that to somebody else in here. You have to pull those nuts and bolts in from McMaster Carr. Get the correct fasteners. 
Additionally, if you're doing the valve body, these holes should be notated or you should have threaded them. How to do it though? Right now it's just going to default to a dimension. And it's trying to dimension the threads. There we go. There's so many pencils. So I'm going to place this far enough out that I can double click on it. And I need to change this to say what the threads actually are. Come on. This is a half inch 13. United National Course 4X. Why 4X, Jackson? Uh, it goes around four times. There's four of them. So I may not be able to fit this here just because of spacing and text size. I might be able to shrink my text size down to precision. No. <laughs> okay, in addition to this, what other questions do you have about what else needs to be dimensioned here? This is by no means fully dimensioned. However, I'm going to leave it up to you to use your dimensioning rules and guidelines to try and dimension this fully. It should look evenly spaced. Think um, graphic rules of graphics. So as we start to dimension some of these features, this ear on the top, Dutch, I don't have to dimension this radius 0.75 four times. I can dimension it once, click next to the arrow, and put 4x in here. Or I could put the words TYP, which stand for typical. Yes. Typical means anywhere we see that form or shape, it's probably correct or it's the same. I'm having a little bit of tough time spacing, so I'm going to just have to make more room. You're really going to watch this video? Yeah, All right. No. <laughs> Uh, a few other things. We know how to bring a table in already, but this image, we've only done this once. Uh, I'll post this. This is the new Sartell Athletics logo. I had mentioned this um, when we started working on the extra credits stuff. If you want to insert an image, I'll make that image available to you. Uh, in this case, I think the JPEG or the ping will come in. So are they updating all of our like, jerseys? Well, this will go to the board for approval in December. So this is the athletics brand, and then they are doing an academic rebrand as well. So the traditional shield and swords, it'll probably stay around kind of as an archival or like throwback, but really moving forward, yes, the coaches would be expected to use this logo on. Because I saw that like basketball got New Jersey. Why do they use that logo now? Because it's board approved. Hey, what's the other one? So if I want to scale this down right now, I have to scale it in this window, and then I also have to move it in this window, which is kind of a pain. I can't drag and drop it, but I can bring this in just to put some branding in there. It's nice. And spacing-wise, I want to make sure there's room for all of my dimensions. This is going to get really full from dimensions by the time you're done. Look, out, look at all the circular diameters you have to dimension. This takes me a long time to correct because people make a lot of dimensioning errors. I would like to correct to get as many of these out of the way as possible. 
If I dimension this here as 2.85, uh, well, actually, let me show you. This is the, the most common one to make. Let me dimension the top hat here. That diameter right there, I would never show that again here as this dimension. But it's so common for people to do that. They're the same. That's a double dimension. So don't do that. Show it once here as a diameter or a circle and be done. Okay. Overall width and height, um, same thing here. We've got an overall height that's important, but we wouldn't show an overall width by clicking on like tangent edges or something like this. This would be bad. I want to undo that one. There. Flange thickness, yes, we'd probably dimension something like this on this view. If we can get it to go up instead of down, that would be better. Would I dimension this like this? No. Why not? It's the same. I've got it dimensioned on my front view already. That is a double dimension. Well, it's a good point, but whenever we can put dimensions on our front view or our primary view, we want to do it. And we just have to make as much spacing. At some point, this may get so crowded where we could add some dimensions over here. There's more than what I have here, absolutely. But I'm not going to dimension the whole thing out. This is the valve body. To be clear, uh, in the back and in the middle with your screen up, you need to dimension the valve body and your part that you created. You need to make working drawings for those two. Okay, your part dimension should have been done yesterday if you did the disc or whatever component. Today you're working on dimensioning the valve body. You're going to print this and fold it, tape it into your notebook. So you've got two working dimensions in there. And then the other thing you can do today is begin to download parts or get that done. Download all the components you need to create your working uh, assembled valve, Desuric valve. So you're going to go shopping, start pulling down the parts you need, and then upload them into Fusion. We're going to create an assembly of the Desuric valve.